good. You look good. Keep it up out there, man. Baltimore, Chicago, Boston. Our right, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. All behind us now. We are back. We are going to run all three. The state of goal is around 2.30. Not being afraid to try something because you're afraid that you're going to fail. I think that's a very poor excuse to, to not try something. This may go terribly. Boston may suck. I may not be able to like walk on the start line, but that is not going to stop me from trying this. This is the 125th BAA Boston Marathon. We'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. I think running three two thirties uh, almost sounds like reasonable. For me, running like one like two twenty two sounds like impossible. I think I can like run two twenty seven, two twenty eight, two twenty nine, or at least in the past when I was in shape, like kind of con somewhat consistently, like week after week. But I've never had day after day. This is not like, oh, he's a 210 marathoner and he's just gonna run 230s. This is like, uh, this dude's gonna be in pain. I kind of have a mule mindset. Uh, you know the mule, like you can load that thing up and it'll just like go. Those things have never hurt. They don't care. They just kind of like do. The mule mindset. So that's what kind of like keeps me going. I've um, been trying to get myself both physically and mentally to that point where you're about to break. That's where the gains are made. That's where you need to be. But the thing that I'm most uncertain about certainly is more the physical aspect of this versus the mental. Just because it's completely uncharted territory and I don't know what these are gonna feel like. So that's the biggest concern I have is just kind of what this is gonna feel like. We're at the Baltimore Expo picking up Jordan's bib. He had to work today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a good one. There you go, bib. You have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I chilled. I chilled this week. But yeah, it's weird for like the first time. Like, I wasn't in pain with like everything I did. <laughs> Having Baltimore just pull the trigger, do the race, get everybody out there was amazing. Everybody who wants to run, everybody who just wants to enjoy the city in that way or hit a personal goal or something like that, Baltimore gives you the awesome opportunity for. And I, I think the race, you see it on TV, the interviews, the coverage of it, I think it's such a special race. If you can, get out here and do it. Baltimore went out fast. It started through Camden Yards. It really was like a Baltimore like highlight. Most of the first half was really nice. There are a lot of people out there. I'm losing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Big plan. I love it. <laughs> that course will punish you uh, for any indiscretion during that first half. I rolled through at like 73. After I hit the first half, I was kind of pumped because I was like, all right, like 72, that gives me a little bit of cushion if I get into big trouble out there. That really was the hardest part for me. I really kind of started to drag a little bit on those hills. 
once I got to mile 20, Lake Montebello, that's when I saw Thomas on the bike who was getting some footage and brought me back to life. It was the most amazing thing. It was like an oasis in the desert. Really the priority was keeping it together, really not, really finding that sweet spot where I was running hard, doing a good effort, but really not destroying the rest of the weekend. There's clocks at pretty regular intervals, which I'm able to like look at it, like usually like the 10, 15, 20, 30K. For Baltimore, there are no clocks, no water stops, no checkpoints. Like you hardly knew where the miles were. So I was checking down just sporadically, just to make sure I was staying honest and not completely falling off because I think I could have like really sped up, really slowed down, never know. But in Baltimore, I never really hit a point where I felt like I was in trouble. And the finish at the Inner Harbor, I think is amazing. There's so many people, it's just, there's so much energy. Once you're done with that race, the celebration begins. Having the marathon, having everybody out there is amazing. At the finish line, I was happy to be at the finish line. I was thrilled with the time and I was thrilled with how I felt. That was at the forefront of my mind. Like, don't do anything stupid that's really going to compromise the rest of this, this weekend. I'm going to be in there for like 30 seconds. You got to stay for like five minutes. No. That's what, it, that's what you're supposed to do. No. Then you get numb. Two, two minutes. I'm just trying to chill out the information. I mean, your muscles are only going to get so cold, right? Whatever you say. Sure. So I'm putting a mix of the hydration of the aminos and the um, creatine or whatever they say. We got this high tech recovery device here. Oh. Took a little nap, and then we got to the airport by five. And I, to go to Chicago. So landed in Chicago. We got there. It was dark. I remember that. First stop, Olive Garden. That was our uh, pre-race next day meal. Yes, under trope, T R O P. Yeah, we got salad and bread sticks. Check. This is all for me. Come on, don't We got there that night. We had arranged for same day bib pickup. Our hotel was about two miles from the start line. So we rented some bikes and we were able to pick up the bib morning of and we just cruised down there on some bikes. Picked up our bibs probably. What time was it? About six o'clock in the morning, and then the race was at seven thirty. So once we picked up the bibs, uh, we just moved right onto the start line and kind of settled in for race day. You can't go into this expecting things to be perfect, and really, you have to just be prepared, just to make the best of everything. I was a little sore, but at the same time, I wasn't, I, I was just like, I, I felt this before. Like I've been this sore before, we're fine. My mentality about this whole thing was just kind of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. When I started running, that's really when the day, the prior day, when I felt it. They say like, give it five minutes. If you give it five minutes, that's like enough time to like get into it. And I think if you can make it that first five, 10 minutes, you can finish what you got in there to do. The way I approached these races was hit the half like you're hitting a two third. So I was just gonna go out, I was gonna run that race like it was my first race, hit the first half, and then hang on. I think when people start thinking like, doing like the math and the calculations of how much they need to save themselves for the second half of the race, I don't know how much of that's 
real and how much that really goes according to plan. So like saving myself was not a thought. After running a marathon the day before, like you can't prepare for what mile 14 is gonna feel like, for example. Just went out there, hit that first half, like it was a fresh race. And then that's when most of the problems start, honestly, is that second half. So I just kind of just dealt with them as they came. So Chicago, I knew I was falling off that 2.30 pace at the end. Uh, I knew I was kind of drifting more closer to six minute and less like 5.45 land. Just falling off that pace a little bit. I wasn't gonna be over that 2.30 thing. And I was just gonna run 2.31. <laughs> like, let's go. I don't wanna yeah. do anything crazy right now. It's gonna Evan mess Boston. Really got to mile three thinking we missed you and we look up and you're right there. We're like, oh my God, hi. <laughs> I don't think I saw you guys at three. I saw you guys at like, we literally 50. Missed Chicago. Three finished they have goose island beer at the end of that race and i was all over that this year was just the most amazing experience I, I i don't know what it was and i don't know why i didn't really get the warm fuzzies last time i did it but uh this year it was amazing after chicago i had this fantasy like i'd go out to navy pier and ride the ferris wheel take a little nap i don't know ice bath whatever uh, we get to back to the hotel. It's like 1130, 12 o'clock. We're starting to think about like getting subway, getting food. And we realize that Southwest canceled on all their flights, including ours to Boston. So after Hannah told me that, I was like, um, okay, this is a problem. Let's figure it out. So the first thing I did was typed into Google maps, how far it is to drive to Boston. And if we left at that moment and drove to Boston, we would arrive there somewhere around two or three in the morning. An option, but not a great option. And if that was gonna be our option, we would have to leave at that minute. Pulled up Google Flights, started looking at other flights. Everything out of Chicago is booked. Like everything, O'Hare, Midway, all the airports, nothing. And I found a JetBlue flight leaving out of Detroit that was leaving at 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern daylight. So it was 12 o'clock noon, and we just booked a six o'clock flight and we had a four and a half hour drive with a one hour time change ahead of us. So we rented a car, uh, immediately packed up our stuff. You should see Anne in our room. She is an absolute saint. Like there was stuff everywhere. And I came out of the bathroom and it was all gone. I honestly feel like everything's like going through my brain slow, but my body's like jittering. I don't know what's going on. Okay. We turned that thing around in probably about a half hour. Like this would be yeah, great if you give me two seconds, I can read off the number for you. I can't pay here. I'm calling you back up. But, uh, our Southwest flight got canceled. Like, directly We're in a major, Boston. major rush. I'm sorry. We're in Indiana, so there's no rules here. This is just lawlessness. Are we, in Indiana already? Are we still filming? Isn't everything you thought <laughs> it would be? Jordan's like, we're fine. I'm like, we're getting to the airport at literally 20 minutes before. He's like, we'll be fine. I'm like, no. Gosh. And we're gonna make it though, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was a true team effort, we pulled it off. We got there in time. And Detroit. that was that. So, so that was not ideal for like recovery because here's the day in Chicago. Like run the race, ride bikes back from the finish line to the hotel, it's 11.30. And then by 12.30, be in a car that you're going to sit in for four hours before getting on a two-hour flight to get to Boston by 8 o'clock. <laughs> so it wasn't ideal, but we made it. And that was the objective. Like, you need to get on the ground in that city, and then we're going to be fine. And then we got to Boston, and it was late. And uh, first thing Hannah did was got me what I needed the next day. About 0.5 away. All right, Hannah, what do we have? Media credentials. <laughs> Take so many good GoPros today. <laughs> the morning of the Boston Marathon, if you would have asked me, what are you about to hit? I don't know what I would have said. I had no idea. This was, I was in completely uncharted territory. My legs had never felt that way before. I had never attempted to do something like this. Um, I don't care, whatever. I need to get one more pin. We're going to the start. Yeah, the start's just a big field. Oh. I gotta get on this bus in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, fine. All right, see you out there. What's the plan today? Like, how's this gonna go? And my answer was, I'm gonna run this marathon as fast as I can. 
this was something that was impossible to plan for, impossible to predict. And really, I, I didn't waste too much time thinking about that. We are at kind of the last stop before the start line. We're pumped, it's gonna be sweet. Uh, it's a rolling start, so we're just gonna kind of hit the line and everybody's gonna go. There's no like gun or any formal start. So the first few miles are gonna be interesting. Raise your hands. Woo! That's not a lot. Woo! Who's gonna go fast today? Woo You're all gonna go fast right here in the front of the line. It was just a matter of getting a start line, start running, hit that half in like a 2.30 pace. And that was my goal. All that training, this is the big dance. This is when it pays off. All those long runs in the heat of the summer. All the cancellations. All the business of the pandemic, all behind us now, we are back. This is the 125th BAA Boston Marathon. The first three miles of Boston is downhill, so I didn't have a really good assessment of anything. Every single piece of that course is just so special, and that, that just got me there. And I started back way further than I thought I was, so I spent the whole like first mile like really slow. I probably, I think I ran like a 6.30 first mile because I just couldn't get out. Things that people think really, really, really matter and that can just mentally derail you really don't. These are just kind of tiny, tiny details in the much bigger picture of what really matters is you just getting it done. I do not take that race for granted. Every time I'm on that star line, I feel special. And it's something, it, it's, it's an experience that if you are shooting for Boston, go for it. Like it is, it is that bucket list race. And there's just so many things you can talk about that make that race special. From Illinois, Jordan Trump, from Maryland. Honestly, I've never felt that kind of, I don't know, the community or support feel before. Like, I'm not doing anything particularly special, but the fact that like people are following this and can relate to it in some way was, was really awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, 232. Uh, 232. I really appreciate the support out there, man. Congrats, man. It's second. Oh, thank you, man. I was, someone turned me on to what your, uh, what your stuff was. Just a couple days ago, I looked you up. Good job, Dave. Save this moment. That's a once in a lifetime. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Dude, you support me as well. Thank you. It's inspiration, man. You're Thank you. Amazing. So, good job today. That support at that moment was the most key thing in the entire world. And it was so cool that the running community is small. Everybody kind of gets it. Everybody understands each other. And the fact that there are people like recognizing that this was like happening and like even just like saying like come on like let's go let's get this mile or whatever was really really cool that was a cool part about boston that uh, i'll remember forever <laughs> but finishing at boston this year it's uh it, it was extra special because of kind of the saga that we've been through and it's it's just such a relief making that last turn and seeing that and i, I was happy with my times I'm Jordan Trofe, and I ran three marathons in three days at a 2.30.30 pace.